All right, so I want to begin um, today by asking uh, some, some questions. And I, I hope that you'll kind of think deeply. Let's pretend that it's not first thing in the morning, really, and that, that our Einstein brains are cranking for a second. And you know, feel free to think a little bit more deeply. Um, this first part will seem kind of, you know, what's that got to do with anything? And it has everything to do with everything as we get into it. Um, so the first question I want to ask Think about this. Nothing? Nothing is real. <laughs> Maybe you are part of the dream. <laughs> You're part of somebody else's dream right now. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> So, if you were to answer, or we could say reality, what is, what is real, what is reality, let's, let's answer that question. If somebody um, asks you that, if I ask you that, what comes to mind? What we think it is? So, okay, what do you think? One of the quotes that I actually wrote on my door is very good. On your door? Oh, okay. Something to think about. Um, <laughs> well, the one I have on right now it says, your thoughts become your reality, so choose them wisely. So, that's my little treat. So, so. Thoughts in Okay. What do you think, Bobby? I'd say something Something that I can my senses. What's the right word for that? Uh, perceptions. Well, maybe we can ask this question: What is what's unreal? What's what's not real? <laughs> Uni unicorns aren't. Have you experienced a unicorn before? <laughs> well, I'm sure if we went one of those unicorns, we look hard enough, we might find something that could be it's unicorn. Like, it's like what the Victor unicorn? Bronco thing, though. He was experiencing things that were very tangible, very real, but he shut those out and made them about reality. He put mm -hmm. himself to something else that mm -hmm. you and I wouldn't think of as being real, but for him, he was living in that, and that was reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's build on that. Okay. So, let, let's continue with that idea in mind. What else would we say, or what, what else could we put over here? What else, I mean, when you think, and I'm not trying to, like, do mental gymnastics or anything here. This is, <laughs> this is not a philosophy class, but I want us to go in a, one direction that will help hmm, make perfect sense of the topic we're playing with. What do you think? Like? Well, if it was absolute reality, it would be suitable to be a thermal plan. Such as? I'm thinking like I just experiment to be able to recreate that over and over again. So if it's repeatable, then it is, by definition, real. Okay, give an example. Like, every swan you see is white. The swans are probably always white, even though you can't 
Okay. So repeatable um, in the scientific terms activities or actions or behaviors or um, well, events. The, what about the one-time occurrences then that don't necessarily happen again that you experience that reality? You chose to experience and perceive that reality? Maybe the guy that's all the person in the Yeah. Or a dragon. Or dragon. So, okay, here's a question for you. I had a student, really, she was a, she was a terrific student in every way she had never been on drugs or anything. She was very level-headed. Um, she was just like all of us in here, just pretty sane in every way. And she, but she would come up to me after class and say, Man, Mike, your aura was really yellow today. Okay? And on one occasion... She came up to me, she, was, she came to my office, she's a very interesting person, and we had a lot of conversations, and so she trusted me, um, and on one occasion she was in my office and she said, um, there, are, there are two people with us here today. And I looked around, and I went, there's, there's only you and me, and she said, then she described him. She could see. She was looking at me and she said, no, there's a lady over there and there's a guy over there. And she described what they were looking like. And she said, I see people like that all the time on, on people's cars. I see people all the time that you don't see. Okay. Now, was she seeing reality? To her, yes. Not to me. I've never seen an aura. I have no idea what an aura looks like, uh, but I don't. I don't even know. I, I've had plenty of people try to tell me, well, all you have to do is this with your eyes and you'll see them, and I never have. <laughs> what did you say? There are things. It also turns people into penguins. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give you, um, kind of based on all of this, because we could go into, you know, maybe uh, we ask, well, are dreams real or are they unreal? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe that goes over here. The, the correct answer, and I don't want to dwell th on this too much, but the one answer that I think works here universally, what is real is is what is or what is happening for me and the way I tell what is happening Bobby is how how do we tell through my senses right the way we tell what is happening and that's not limited to the five that are here. We have a lot of inner senses. That one, the, the lady's mm, spiritual sense that she had, whatever it was, for her was real. It, what is, it, what, what is happening, okay? So there's, there's our first kind of um, question answered. What is real? It is what is happening, okay? Now, next question. These next two are not so cerebral. They're not so... Oh. Um, first one is... Well, I'll just ask this. Um, where are you right now? In class. What's, that ri what's the right answer to that every time? What? Here. That's the right answer. Every time. Can you be somewhere else besides here? I mean, experientially. 
this is this is experience, okay? We'll call this experience. Through our senses, we tell what is happening, okay? Now, can you be somewhere else than here? But that's not experientially. You can't I can't experience water skiing right now because I'm not on the lake. Right? I can think I'm there, but that's not the same as being there. I can't experience water skiing. I can't experience hiking to Ben Lomond. I can only think about it, but that's not the same as being there. I saw Yeah, she, apparently she's, um, and no, that wasn't the same lady. Um, apparently she experienced it. And I don't, I don't understand that. Um, it wasn't just a imagination thing. It was, for her, it was a real experience. So it's a good question. Um, for most everybody else, um, okay, so, so we'll say, I'm going to say that reality, this is reality, is, includes our experience of being here. Okay? So, you can't be anywhere else than here. No matter what we say or no matter what you try to think, you're always wherever you are. Okay, and this is not semantics. This is not rhetoric. This is, this is mm, experientially speaking. You're here. You, you can't be anywhere else. You can't be at the store. You can't be on top of Ben Lowe and water skiing or any of these. You're here. And that's the way it is from the moment you're born till the moment you die. I don't know much about before or after, but from the moment, every moment of our life, essentially is we're here and it can't be anything else okay are we okay with that we can think it we can imagine it but that's not the same as being it okay now next question is at what point in time are you always at what point in time is it always for you What's the right answer to that always? Now. It is always now for us. Okay? It is never... Have any of you ever been able to go back in your past and relive it? Not just think about it, but re-experience it. Yeah, and I don't understand how that works. That's kind of one of those... Uh, exceptions that I don't understand because I know we all at least I've had a, plenty of those where I went oh I just lived that again <laughs> but under n most normal situations has anyone ever for real like let's say you want to go back and relive um, yesterday's um, bike ride or something is that possible? You could try how? Like we'll hear one where we think like I just fall into the and try and do the same thing but, as remember, but it's not the same. But you're doing it now and not yeah, then. Exactly. So right? Okay. Yeah. Sure, you can imagine it, but that's not the same as being as as doing it. Okay? Now, can any of you have any of you or do you know anybody who can shoot forward a year and pre live something before it happens before it's happening now so it's it's a it's a future moment and go there and live it is that possible it's not is it wouldn't that be nice i think that'd be great if i could shoot forward a year from now and find out what stocks are doing really well i mean for real come back and buy a truckload wouldn't that be nice but nobody can do that. You can't go into your future. So the only reality that we ever have, the only true 
absolute reality that we ever have is this. This is all there is, ever is for us as far as our ability to experience from the moment we're, we're born till the day we die. Okay? Are we all okay with that? Are there any questions? Is that too... Now, what does that have to do with anything at all? Well, um, I want to I give you an idea that... Um, see, I work with a lot of people, uh, both in class and elsewhere, community groups and all kinds... And everyone, one of the most common things that I hear among people is, I have so many things on my plate that, and they're all important. You know, I have so many things to do, and they're all so important. And because, I, and I can't, there's just too many things. And the too many things idea turns into enormous stress. We were doing a class last night. We do a, I, I teach a wellness coaching class. And we had one of the students in the class who came up and um, she was doing some uh, interacting with a coach and that was her. I mean, you could just see the stress. She said, you know, I have... He said, tell us about your... The coach said, tell us a little bit about your life. You know, what's going on for you? And she said, well, I have... I have garbage school and I have garbage kids and I have garbage husband and I have garbage church and I have garbage... You know, it was like everything about her was just oozing with stress. Because she said, I, have, I can't get rid of any of those things. They're all important and there are too many things. And the solution, what, where we're going to go with this today and Thursday is the solution that makes it so that you can have every bit of it and no stress. It's one of the coolest concepts I've ever come upon in my whole life. And I'm going to try and present it to you in a way that makes sense. But we have to have this idea first in mind. And the reason why we have to is because here's the truth that I know about this. In our here and now, there's no stress. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, there is no stress in our here and now. Except for maybe 0.0001% of the time. Otherwise, our here and now experience is stress-free. And I can hear your voices, your collective thoughts going, you should live my life. My here and now really sucks. Um, but I want to explore something with you that is really cool. Um, let me see. Let me get this set up really fast. Just as I'm doing that, I want you to just think about that. Just think, you know. Okay, my present moment is that accurate? Oh man, I lost my cartoons. Shoot. They're not here. Never mind. Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. That I hadn't... I didn't know this concept. It, it hadn't come to me before this. But this experience got me on this road of, 
of this idea more powerfully than I had ever, ever uh, before that understood. The, the, the incident was, I was down at BYU and I was taking a class. I was in a program called um, Family Financial Planning. I was planning to be a financial planner. That was the program I was in and I thought that's what I want to be is somebody who handles really rich people's money, tries to help them get more rich and in the process I get some of it. Um, and it's a pretty good program but I was um, taking a class at the time that was one of those pivotal classes that if you do well in it then you'll do well in the whole rest of the program. If you don't do well you probably shouldn't be in it. Um, and so I was taking this class and there was, an, there was a test coming up early in the semester about this time of year and it was a really important test. It was kind of a pivotal test as well. And my friends and I, we just studied like crazy. We had group study groups and we had, we spent just hours studying for this test. It was a really strong test. And um, if you've ever been to, the, to BYU's testing center, it's just one big rectangular building and 600 seats and everybody's just, the stress is just so intense in this one building. It's, it's about, it's about as scary a place as you'd want to be. And so I, I went there and I got the, uh, I gave the person my card and I got the Scantron and the test. And for two hours I took this test and I thought, okay, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. And after the test was over, she gave me the test back, the person at the desk, and, you know, I, I immediately saw what I got on the test. The Scantron showed, and it was a D. And I, I, I instantly went, oh my gosh, I'm dead. Because I didn't know what else I wanted to do. I had no idea where I wanted to go. But all I could think about was, I'm so dead. Because I'd already changed majors twice and I was tired of being in school and to, to have to decide on another major and go through that whole starting again was not an option that I wanted to pursue and so which is what I ultimately did. But um, my thoughts went to all the bad things that were going to happen. And how could that lady, who, my professor, have been such an idiot of a professor to make such a rotten test? You know, and I thought about all the things that, or, and my thoughts also included, why didn't I study this? And why didn't I study that? You know, all the, why didn't I do things right? And how come, you know, all of those things that, I was very, very, um, just hating everything, future and past, okay? And I'll never forget this because it was so profound. I was walking, it was, it was evening, and I was walking from the testing center to my car, which you walk a certain distance and then it's down some hills, down some stuff. You think you got problems parking here. You have no idea. We, we would park three miles away and be happy um, down at BYU. It was just horrible. And so I knew I had a long walk, and as I was walking, I, I was about 100 yards from the testing center, and I noticed that the sun was setting, um, and the campus is kind of up on a hill, kind of like how we are, and I could see Utah Lake off in the distance, and I could see it was autumn, it, actually it was further into the, the season, because the colors on the trees were just exploding with orange and brown and reds and gold. It was just amazing. And I saw, I caught this view of what was going on. The colors were just exploding and I could see the line on the mountain as the sun was setting. I could see the line on the mountain go up and I could see the colors starting to change from golden, bright, brilliant to dull you know, less brilliant. And as I was walking, I had this voice in my head that said, stop. Just stop. 
and watch. And, and I thought, no, I've got to be angry. I'm so ticked off at that. You know, I was walking. I said, I've got to be so mad at this professor, and I've got to be so worried about what's going on. And the voice said, and I have a lot of voices, but this voice said, stop and watch. And so I said, whatever. You know, and so I, there was a bench there, and I sat down, and I kind of... Um, got my mind out of everything that was, wasn't happening and I just watched the sunset. And it, it was about the most... I mean, it happens every day, the sunsets. But I'd never seen one quite like this. And as it was happening, as the, the line was going up, as the colors were changing, um, I had this overwhelming, powerful feeling of this is all you have, is this moment. Enjoy it. Be in it. What will happen is not happening now. What happened before is not happening now. Enjoy this moment. And in that moment, I, I saw the most incredible sunset. And I walked, you know, after a while, I walked to my car and I... And I, I I just had this feeling, well, everything will work out. Things will be okay. And they were, like they usually are. And it was tricky. I did change my major. And I did end up being in school another year and a half. But that moment that happened changed how I look at everything. And I didn't, have an, I didn't have an understanding of what this meant, this, this idea of being in the moment. And later on, I was reading a book by a gentleman by the name of John Kabat-Zinn. Um, and he talked about this, this term called mindfulness. He talked about this term called mindfulness. And this book, it was called, um, it's on your book list as a matter of fact, it's called Wherever You Go, There You Are. And the whole idea of this book is, this is your reality. This, when you stay here, you get peace. When you stay here, you get peace relaxation. When you stay here, you get a full life. The reason why we have stress 99 point whatever percent of the time is because we shoot our minds off into the future and we shoot our minds into the past and since we can't live there, we just think we're there and we let those thoughts include pains, you know, whatever. And our bodies, not knowing the difference, see, our body doesn't know the difference between an imagined event and an experienced event as far as the stress response is concerned. And so when we imagine something that isn't happening now, but we think it is, our body goes, oh, I guess I better prepare for this pain. And we get stressed. We get whatever. And when we, same with the past, when we, you know, how many times have you ever been in an argument with somebody, which is a very here and now thing, and then afterwards, you keep reliving it in your mind over and over and over. Does that happen to any of you guys? Where you just... You keep... You're... Oh, she said this and she said this. And she said, oh, man, I can't believe I said that. And, all this. and you keep going over and over and over. Well, what happens to your body when you're... Excuse me, rethinking that? Yeah, it's like... Oh. Mindfulness, 
the idea behind mindfulness is the conscious, um, intentional desire, it's the conscious intention of bringing our awareness back to our experience. The instant we do that, stress response turns off. Because when we, because we're always safe. I don't think I can. <laughs> to our here and now experience. It is a conscious intention of coming back to our here and now moment experientially. In other words, through our senses. See, Bobby accurately said our, our reality is what our senses are bringing to us. What am I seeing now? What am I hearing now? What am I... You know, if I go like this, is this reality? How do I know it's real? What? I can see it. I can feel it. I could lift it up and something happens. Kind of, it's repeatable. I can keep doing it. Our stress happens whenever we take ourselves out of this. That's such a key thing. People just think, oh, I'm stressed, I can't help it. Of course you can. Be here now. And that sounds like, well, that's a cute little phrase. Bless you. But try it. We'll, we'll explore how to do that in just a few minutes. But um, does that make sense so far? Any questions so far, about it? I was kind of thinking about this before class, actually. It's kind of like, you know, people are stressed about certain significant things that happen in their life, like maybe like someone dies in their family or something. Like, how do you not get stressed from that? It's not just hurting you. Yeah, well, I don't think, I think there's a difference between being stressed and being concerned, or being stressed and being loving, or being stressed and showing empathy or sympathy. Stress involves a sense of threat. Oh, I'm going to have some pain happen to me. The threat is what, real or not, and as we've mentioned before, it, it's rarely real, but we sense some kind of a bad stuff's going to happen to me as a result. That's a different thing than the love and the, you know, the caring that you feel for somebody. That's a different feeling. And I'm, I don't want us to get rid of those things. Not really. Mm -mm. Until you say to yourself, man, my life is never going to work out with that person not in it. Then your body goes, oh, I get a bad thing's going to happen. I guess I better prepare for it. That is, yes. When, when you just, you know, sorrow about that person not being around, that's different. There's nothing wrong with that. Um... Think about the most difficult test you've ever taken. Does anyone have a most difficult test ever? What, Mike, what was your? Calc 3, so calculus. Like there's three classes of calculus now? Oh, okay. So you've taken, so was it a pretty tough test? Yeah. So what part of that test was stressful? Okay, so you got results from your thing. Where's the stress? Okay, what what were you, what were your thoughts about? Okay, here's the here's the test, right? This is not light stuff. Here's the test. Can I use your pen? 
I'm taking the test, okay? I'm, okay, so, and I don't even know where to start with calculus. I took it twice and I don't remember anything that I ever learned in it. Um, so, there's lots of letters and a few numbers. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, here's the, here's the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not reality. Um, here's my, I'm taking Mike's test. It's Mike, right? I'm taking Mike's test, okay? What part of that is threatening to me? Remember, stress only is initiated by a perception of a threat. What part of that test, okay, here's paper, words, numbers, letters, what part of that is stressful? What? The outcome. And so we go, here's Mike taking the test. Is he stressed about the test? No. no. He's stressed about what happens if things don't turn out the way he'd like. So in other words, he's creating an unreality and the result of that is he gets to have stress. Way to go. But it's not the, it's not the test. When you're taking the test, the test is not going to eat you up. Now, how long ago did you take that test? You seem to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you seem to be okay. I mean, nothing really damaging has happened in that year as a result of that test, right? Bobby? Okay, here's, here's a question we'll use sports, since you're kind of in that world. Does anyone here play basketball? Any, any, you played some? So, let's say, and we've all seen sports um, games, uh, let's, let's use basketball. Uh, we've all seen basketball games, I mean. Um, so let's say that you're the coach of a, one of the two teams that's out on the court, okay? And your team is up by one point and you fouled somebody on the other team and it's like one second left in the game. You fouled somebody on the, one of your guys fouled somebody on the other team and he was shooting so he's got two shots, you're ahead by one, okay? So he could potentially win um, the game with making both foul shots, okay? You picture that? Okay. If you're a good coach, what do you do? What do you do right then before he shoots his foul shots? You call timeout. Who said that? Corey, why do you call timeout? Okay, and we say that we, we're going to freeze him at the line. We're going to ice him. We're going to make him think. What do we want him to think about? Yes. We want him to think Man, if I miss this shot, it's going to be bad. I'm going to lose. And if he thinks that, all of his physiology is going to be about running and fighting, not foul shooting. So the wrong muscles will be firing. His heart rate will go up. His breathing rate will go up. But most importantly is his fighting and running muscles are going to be firing, not his foul shooting muscles. Does that make sense? And so what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're going to take you out of reality into some future, make you think about it, and intentionally turn on the stress response. Now, if he's a good basketball player, if he's a smart basketball player, he will stay in the moment because he knows if I stay in the moment, if I just... Mm, relax and enjoy this moment, then the muscles won't be firing off to be running and fighting. They'll be getting, they'll be just whatever's with that moment. And then when he steps up to the line to shoot the foul shots, the right muscles will be 
and working in the right, because he's trained them to shoot the foul shot. Does that make sense? I mean, it is common sense, but we, we do this all the time. How many times have you been driving along and you're, you're thinking about the day that was just passed and all the things that didn't go quite right? Okay? How do you, what do you notice about how you're gripping the steering wheel? Have you ever done that? Pride your fingers off the steering wheel? God, oh my God, what am I... Well, your fighting and running muscles are the ones that have been firing, not your relaxed driving muscles. It doesn't take a grip steering wheel to drive well. As a matter of fact, it makes it worse. We spend so much of our time in what isn't happening. And whenever we do, we raise the... And I'm not saying, okay, we should never think of future and past. I'm not saying that. But whenever we are stressed, that's why we are. Because our thoughts are not focused on what's happening. We've gone to the future and past and we've added the possibility of pain somehow in there. It is common sense. But we forget it. Um, let's see. So, um, I don't know what happened to all of my handouts. So let's let's go over this a little bit. Um, we actually have. L so there's the problem. Let's, let's analyze how do we get to here because we've forgotten how to do this. Now, we do actually have a really good model for this kind, for being mindful. Oh, that, there should be a D right there. Mindful, not mindful. We have a really good model. Who do you think is our best model for living this way? For living almost exclusively in their present here and now moment. That's a pretty good one. Can I explain myself? No, that's a good one. Yeah, go ahead. I, I was just, I had the opportunity to spend a couple of days with my sister's dog that I love to go and run with in the mountains and stuff. And I noticed that when I'm with him, he doesn't care about anything except for how much fun he's having to his mistakes. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm just running. That's he a good one. It. He doesn't care about whatever was going on two hours ago. He doesn't think, oh man, you, why did you do that to me? You yeah. threw that stick. Now I've got to run after it again. You, and it keeps every time you come and visit. That's what I have to do. <laughs> that's not what he's thinking, is it? Oh, he's so stoked on life. He's such a good example. Good example. There's another one that I was thinking of, but that that's a perfect one. Yeah, I was thinking kids. Um, you know, I have a I have a four-year-old right now. Now think how silly this would be if this were how he was thinking. And it's not. I mean, he's, he really is. He, he exemplifies this, as did we when we were that age. Think about this. So he's, he's thinking to himself, Oh, man, in a half hour I'm going to have to jump on the trampoline. <sighs> I probably will try those backflips again. And I know I'm going to land on my head. Oh, it's just going to be awful. Because I remember last time I was jumping, I tried to flip, and my head came down on my chin, and that really hurts. So I don't think I should do it again. And then after, we're going to have to eat some food. And I don't know, it might be yucky food, so I might... Uh, I'm just going to have to eat some. And then I'll have to play Mario Kart Wii for another hour. I might crash ten times. Oh, that will be so hard. Uh, it's just so tiring. Now, does that sound ridiculous? But that's what we do. That's how our minds go. Oh, I've got a test coming up tomorrow. 
Well, what are you not doing right now? Okay. You and studying would be a good thing to do, but you're also not taking the test right now. See, the kid, my four-year-old, is just like the dog. Oh, what am I doing now? I'm not jumping on a tramp, so I'm not going to fill my mind with trampoline thoughts. I'm going to fill my mind with Mario Kart Wii thoughts. And when I'm done, and this really, I mean, every moment of his is, oh, I'm going to jump on you because now that seems like a fun thing. And now I'm going to go over here and color. And this, that seems like a fun thing to do right now. And what am I, oh, am I hungry now? No, I'm not hungry now. And then he goes on to the next thing all day long. And that's what we do. I mean, that's the opposite of what we do. But we all did that. When we were young, that's how we lived. And then at some point, we decided that it was more important to put our minds out here because we're concerned. You know, we, we've got to be prepared. And I'm not, there's nothing wrong with planning. We'll get to planning. But planning is way different than worrying. What is the difference? What's the difference between planning and worrying? Okay, meaning... Yes. Yes. When, when you plan, you're put, taking future moments into the present and applying control. That's the definition of planning, is taking future moments and bringing them into the present to apply control for that future moment. Very proactive. Very in control. No threat. Worrying, however is taking our minds into the future and adding pain in there somehow. No control, lots of threat. Stress goes up. The little kid has no sense of, oh, in the future I'm going to have pain happen. Or very little of it. I love this quote by Gerald Jampolsky. Just listen to this. I don't think this is in the book. Um, he said, Gerald Jampolsky wrote, Love is letting go of fear. Um, and a couple of other ones on love. It's really, he's really a brilliant guy. He said this. Just kind of fo focus on what, what he says here. He says, I have often thought that we have much to learn from infants. They have not yet adapted to the concept of linear time with a past, present, and future. They relate only to the immediate present, to right now. As we become older, we tend to accept the adult values which emphasize projecting past learning into the present and, into, and anticipated future. It is difficult for most of us to have even the slightest question about the validity of our past, present, future concepts. In other words, to think to ourselves, well, I shouldn't be thinking about the future, I should stay in the moment, is, it's so foreign to us. Be here, stay with this, be in the moment. That's so foreign to us that we don't even give it another thought. He says, we believe that the past will continue to repeat itself in the present and future without the possibility of change. Consequently, we believe we are living in a fearful world where sooner or later there will be suffering, frustrations, conflict, depression, and illness. And I, my comment was, he contends that we can choose to experience this instant as the only time there is. Because in truth, that is the case. It's never not now for us. This is always how it is for us. I know I'm, I'm saying this over and over again, but I have to mm, labor this point to get our minds to think for a second. Okay. You know, it's really funny to watch. I, I love watching behavior. And, and I love watching... This happens all the time. You walk around on campus and you see people... You know, and this is how they look while they're walking. Excuse me. It's 
excuse me. Have you ever walked around campus and seen how beautiful it is? This is the most beautiful place. Have you ever... It, it's amazing how much we miss because we aren't enjoying this. We're focused on this. Let me ask you this. How many in here? Is anyone in here... Mary Kay, you probably have... How many of you have had kids? When you, how, how, how old are your kids now? Do you have just one who's three? So when you, do you remember when um, your child was a boy or a girl? So when your boy was three weeks old and you're holding him, What are your thoughts like when you're holding that baby? When you're just with yourself, there's no, nothing else to do but just hold the baby. What, what thoughts do you notice yourself having when that's happening? Yeah. Or do you think to yourself, oh man, you've got a rough life. It's going to be so hard. And there will probably be, you'll probably have have people try to give you drugs and there will probably be people who will try to and you'll see so much guard you'll see 17,000 deaths before you're the age of 8 on TV I mean all of these you don't think all those things you're just going holy cow this baby is so cool and you look at his little fingers and you look you, look, you hear his breath now when you are when you're in that moment are you stressed? No, you're just going, holy cow. It's the same thing. We have some of the coolest sunsets ever here. And I've been to most places in the country. We have killer sunsets. And it always amazes me how we'll be driving along and my, my kids actually will say, Dad, stop, look at that. And we'll, we'll all check out the sunset. We'll pull off to the side. My wife does the same thing. She'll pull off the side. And for like 15 minutes, we'll just go, that is cool. That is so cool. Wow. And, and what we get in that moment is not stress. Because we tune in to what is happening right here and now with our senses. And usually when we do that, that which we tune into becomes bigger. It becomes more cool. It becomes more interesting. And I'll show you how that works because it's, it's absolutely one of the most incredible things that we as humans get to experience is the expansion of what is. I know that sounds like, oh, that's weird. You watch. We'll do an ex exercise or two. They'll just knock your socks off. So how do we do this? There is a process. There's a method for returning to this childlike, this... Um, more mindful way of being and it really is a way of being it's not a nice tool it is a way of being and so I want to go through these with the time that we have left and then um, kind of explore how that would look um, the first thing we do so well, I would write this it's called becoming mindful The first thing that we have to do in order to make this become our, in order to live in this where there's no stress, is we have to, one, we have to stop. And what I mean by that, it doesn't mean, you know, you walk along and then, okay, stop. It, you could be in the most busy place ever. You can do this in the, on the bus. You can do this in an airplane. It doesn't matter where you are. What I mean by stop is to stop all the chatter that is this direction or that, this direction. Oh my gosh, I got this test tomorrow. And I'm not ready. And oh man, I'm, I know I'm going to blow it. I just know I'm going to blow it. 
And you have to consciously say, I, I don't know if this is, sounds weird to you, but there have been times where I'll, I'll be loop filming a past event. A past, say, discussion I had with somebody that turned a little heated. And I keep living, and I actually have to say to myself, stop. Just stop. I have control over me, my thoughts. I better, it's, there's no one else in there. You, you have total control over your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You're the one who's thinking your thoughts and you have total control and you can say to them, stop. I don't need to think about that. Nobody's holding a gun to your head saying, you think this way or else. You have total control over every thought that you have. But we, we stop taking that control and that's when our mind goes, so we have to stop and go, okay, I don't need to think of that thing. I don't need to think of how hard that test's going to be. You don't have to. Okay, does that make sense? So we stop the mental chatter. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that we do, and I know this is like, oh, that's, it's too easy. Well, kids do it. That's it must be easy because all of our, us when we were kids we're doing this. The second thing we do is we look. And this is where Bobby's insight comes in. Is we tune into all of our senses and we let our senses bring to us what is happening. Okay, do you get that? We let all of our senses, including our intuitive, spiritual ones, including, you know, where am I gravity-wise? I mean, we've got tons of senses that are always pick up, picking up what's happening. We tune into those. What am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I noticing? What am I, what am I smelling? What's going on with my skin? What's going on with my inner you know, insight part of me. What's happening there? One, let's try this really cool thing. Um, what I want you to do really fast, um, I want you to get a separate piece of blank paper. You're not going to hand this in, but you're going to write a ton on it really fast. This is a really cool thing. Okay, so I want you to do this. Um, so I want you to put your pen in your dominant in your writing hand, and then I want you to ha take your other hand, and I just want you to let's see. I want you to put it so your elbows on the table so you can see your hand. Okay. I want you to put your hand in front of you. I know this is like, okay, we did this in kindergarten. I want you to, on your paper, so you're going to be looking at your hand, and then you'll write something. You look at your hand. I want you to write down everything that you notice about your hand. I want you to stop and say, okay, what am I noticing about my hand? And the first thing that unfolds for you, write it down. Next thing you notice, write it down. Next thing you notice, and keep on writing everything that shows up for you about your hand. And when you stop writing, and you think, well, I've got it, then look again. Because I guarantee there's more. So, and also, as you're doing this, I want you to notice your little voice in the back of your head, or in the front, or the side, that's saying, well, this is sure stupid, what is this? And thank that, write down, my voice said, this is a dumb idea. This is a dumb activity. <laughs> and then, so you're just noticing that too. You're not, you know, we're, we're like one above that line of observation, remember, and our levels are responding. You're in that ob observation mode. So, and I'm going to give you a longer amount of time than you think you need. So just start writing. And yeah, it doesn't matter. Just whatever you think is 
hand information. So go ahead and just kind of write as fast as you possibly can and listen to your critical voice. Thank you for sharing.
Okay, put your pens down. Now, I want you to notice something. I've got some questions first. How many of you got, did any of you get it all? How many feel like you got most everything? Got everything? You started what? So that you have something else to put on there. <laughs> what, what became obvious to you as you continued to look at your hands? What, what things about the process became obvious? There's a lot more than you appreciate. Yeah. That, that is one of the most profound ideas of mi mindfulness. They say that we take in about 1% of all the stimuli that's available to us in any moment. We take in only about 1%. Why is that? Why do you think that is? Why are we taking in so little? Yes, because our minds are not engaging in this present moment. Has it ever occurred to you? Have you ever thought to look around, how many blondes are in this room and how many redheads and how many mm, no hair and how many, you know, how many people do we have in here who... Just looking around, there's so many interesting things. How many of you, so you think you got, how many of you on your paper wrote down that you had four fingers and a thumb? Did anyone miss that part? That's what fingers, That's what fingers and thumbs. Seems like the most obvious thing. How many, did any of you, did any of you happen to notice how your hands smelled? Did any of you happen to notice that it makes a sound yes. when you do this? You know, or makes different sounds, or makes different sounds? You can... The point is... What? No, but the point is... The point that I'm trying to help us understand here is people, especially if you ever get bored... Just look around. It's unbelievable. You're exactly right. There is an unbelievable bunch of stuff that we could put our attention on, but we go, oh no, I'm sure I've got to be worried about something. No. So, okay, now, I think this is, a, this is a really important point. Um, you have a choice. Tune into this for just a second. You have a choice about what you think about. Like I said, nobody's holding a gun to your head saying, should think this way, and even if they were, you'd still have a choice about it. Now... The interesting thing in what you're saying is, since you have a choice, which is a smarter choice? This one or this one? This one is, it's so amazingly better choice, but we think we need to be worried about the test or the upcoming foul shot or I got to call her up and I know she's going to say no. If I call her up... <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no problem with thinking about the future. But if you're in stress at all, here's why. So just, how, this is how you get yourself back to homeostasis, is you just go, okay, what am I, where am I right now? What am I noticing right now? And you stop and you look and we'll go over what's next on, on what is today? So Thursday, about how to how to make this a working principle. So try this when you're walking to your next thing today. See what happens when you just tune into what's going on. See you guys. Have a great day.